This video was shot at KublaCon 2015, the con of cons, in Burlingame, California. Gamers of all sorts descend on KublaCon each Memorial Day weekend to find everything they love. Pathfinder Society and indie RPGs, tournaments and game design seminars, publisher and retail vendors, the legendary gaming flea market, and much, much more. Visit kublacon.com for more show details and look through all we witnessed at ogrecave.com. This is Alan Sugarbaker with ogrecave.com at kublacon 2015. Let's go see what we can find. Joe, you haven't been out to kublacon for a while. So. I know, man. I'm glad to be back. Good to see you. We, we don't want you here. Get out. Uh, damn it. Fine. <laughs> I'm back to the interview. Oh, okay. Well, let's do that. Then get out. <laughs> okay. What, what's new for, for Goodman Games right now? <laughs> so here's a couple cool things we're working on. Um, as you know, we publish adventure modules. Yes. Dungeon Crawl Classics. Something new that we're doing is publishing the sketch cover edition. So Mr. Doug Kovacs, who does the covers for our modules... He does these amazing sketches, which are comparable, in my opinion, to many of the finished pencil art pieces you'll see throughout the industry. Yeah. So we're doing alternate versions of the covers of his original pencil sketches, some oh. of which are terrific images. Nice, yeah. Yeah, so you'll see this on a lot of the upcoming covers and some of the con specials we do. So kind of like an Ashcan art edition. Exactly, okay. yeah, which is really neat. Um, something else we're working on. For Free RPG Day, we have printed mm -hmm. up these judges' screens. Cool. So in, uh, I guess, about a month, you can go to your local store on June 20th and pick one up. Yeah. But we got them back from the printer, and they turned out great. So it's yeah. these three-panel screens at long nice. last. DCC yeah, yeah. fans have an official screen, and of course the inside has you know, handy tables. All the handy things that you need to know during the game and how to kill the characters. Exactly. Right. Well, that part's easy. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I think you were actually, weren't you in one of the original playtests? Pretty, pretty early, pretty early. back when? I, think, I believe you? I got killed by a, a critical fumble. Yeah, <laughs> it was bad. I sort of remember that, yeah. Uh, but anyway, the art on this is terrific. Each of these panels is new. It's not reframed at all. Cool. Um, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it's really cool. Anyways, this is great. And then we have, coming up, um, you probably heard by now that we have the license to publish the works at Fritz Leiber. Right. So Fafford and the Grey Mouser, Linkmar, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and we're working our way towards a big box set that'll come out. Yes. Yeah, probably end of this year, early next year. But on our way there, we're doing these previews of different kinds of content. Um, and there's another one coming out. Uh, they're time to con. So Gary Con, we released this one. Mm -hmm. All about Nin Gobble in his cave. Um, in North Texas RPG Con, there'll be a book of patrons set in okay. Cyrus Worlds. Okay. Um, then Gen Con will have an adventure, and then eventually we'll get to the box set. Nice. So it's all very exciting. Okay, so that's all kinds of excitement going on here at the booth. I know, it's just hard to contain myself. It was, it was pretty active today, <laughs> it seemed like. It was busy, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess we'll hopefully catch you next show. We might let you back in. Okay. <laughs> I'll beg for permission. Okay. <laughs> Joe, good to see you. Cool. Good seeing you, man. Thanks. Thanks. So I'm here at KubaCon with James Ernest again, and uh, he's just had a packed room with some other game designers talking about game design as, as publishing as, as one is want to do we we uh this year we did a, a sequence of of four <clears throat> lectures about being a game designer one of them was how to invent a game one of them how, how to refine the game the one we just did was how to sell it to publishers how to market it to publishers and okay. then we're going to do one about self-publishing where the advice is don't do it uh, but you know <laughs> people want to come people so, still do it right there's a couple people at the show this year that just are doing it out of the garage yep yep Oh, I wish I had a garage. That would be so good. That would be nice. <laughs> I wish I had a car. Oh, sorry. Right. I wish you had a car. We'd go to in and out after this. Oh, damn it. I'll find a car. All right. Let's find a car. Anyway, so um, you just finished the Lord of the Fries Kickstarter run. Yes. Which looks like it did very, very well. Uh, Lord of the Fries uh, is a reprint, and unfortunately, really, for this year, this is the year of the reprint. Um, 
Uh, Lord of the Fries came back to us from Steve Jackson a year ago. We wanted to get it back into print because it's an evergreen title for us. Mm -hmm. And as reprints go, it's been our most successful Kickstarter, which is great. Um, and now at the show, I'm play testing all the new menus and all the new art and, and, and finding all kinds of problems with it that I get to go back to the studio <laughs> fix okay. next month. But it'll go off to press in about a month and come out in September. The Lord of the Fries core game is going to have both the original deck and a new coffee shop deck that all have different ingredients and two different menus and then one big hybrid menu for shuffling them all together. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're doing a bunch of expansions for it as well that are an individual restaurant with all new art and its own menu and its own thing. So Totally different ingredients right. in some cases. Um, yeah. And I, I strongly considered doing the court game as its own standalone deck as well, but I, I, all my friends were like, all my consulting friends were like, no, 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 you need, yeah, have it match keeping the brain and have it, you know, be in that, in that larger box. Right. So if people don't know, can you give them in a nutshell what Lord of the Fries is? Yeah. Um, give Me the Brain was the original, and the story is you're all zombies working in a fast food restaurant, and you only have one brain to pass around. And right. so to get your work done, you need to first get your hands on the brain. So that's what that game is about. It's about emptying your hand of, of work. Lord of the Fries has the same characters, so it's still a zombie fast food restaurant, right. but the mechanics are different. This one is more like a rummy-style game where you're trying to make combo meals out of a handful of random ingredients. Mm -hmm. So the cowabunga, it's sort of a surfer-themed restaurant because it's got a cowabunga that's a cow meat and a bun, and the cheese abunga is the same thing with a piece of cheese. People who can play that, they get points, they get to call what's next on the menu, and mm -hmm. um, you're trying to get as many points out of your hand as possible because the cards you play are worth positive points, the cards you keep are worth negative points. Yes. Get yeah. rid of the berry pie before the end. Right. The berry pie only appears in one uh, item <laughs> on the menu, and so if you yes. can't make the, that patriarch, then you have to... You know, it's the, it's the one six-point card that gets passed get around. Get rid of it. Yeah. 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 I have seen a couple people here at the show with, I think, Friday's the Restaurant of the Damned shirts or, nice. or uh, little pins. Yep. So it's out there in the wild. People are well it's, aware. It's uh, 15, 16 years old, and this mm -hmm. is about the fourth edition, depending on how you count. Uh, so the game's been through a lot. It's, it hasn't really changed very much since its inception. It's, uh, it's always been solid, mm -hmm. but we're always trying to improve the content. All of the art in this game is, is new art. Brian Snowdy did not only different art for all the new menus, but also the, he redid the old art in the sort of new style, which is a little more detailed. Okay. I don't see any problem with reprinting something as long as it's something people want. Well, it's, it's an evergreen. Like, yeah. <clears throat> when, when I went to work in the computer game industry in around 2006, 2007, um, I found a home for all my evergreens because I wasn't really... I didn't have the bandwidth to print games anymore. Yeah. So the Friday's games, Give Me the Brain, Lord of the Fries, went to Steve Jackson Games and lived there for a while. Kill Dr. Lucky went to Paizo and lived there for a while and mm -hmm. so on. Like, I found homes for all the evergreens because they really are evergreens. It's, it's, it's a mistake to not keep them in print. Yeah. Um, and Dr. Lucky is also coming back to us and mm -hmm. it's coming back this year, which is why this is the year of the reprint because with Paizo uh, being done with the print run that they had, mm -hmm. I got the rights back and I don't want to let it sit. Sure. Uh, so this October, we're going to be kickstarting the 20th anniversary edition of Kill Dr. Lucky. Yeah, well, okay, I know it, it, makes, it gives us all the, the feels. It's been 20 years. It won't really have been 20 years until uh, 2017. Uh, okay. This is actually going to be kind of the 19 and a half anniversary edition. And we actually might even call it that. Um, but uh, it's going to be a new look. It's going to look more like the Get Lucky card game that we did last year. Okay. It's going to have Israel Evans doing the art, and we're going to simplify the board so it's easier to read. But I've also done a lot of tweaking to the rules because it has been almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten all the feedback that I can stand about that game. And, you know, I know that it's fun, but I also know that the original game has some mechanics problems that I now know how to fix. Okay. So at this show, we're testing the sort of cleaner, newer version of Kill Dr. Lucky. And you're not going to miss anything I'm taking out, but it's just a cleaner running engine. And it, it's more about what it promises to be about than the old game was. There's more about tactics and more about hiding and more about um, planning mm -hmm. uh, even without having added any rules. We really took stuff out. Um, and it's less about monopolizing the, the Dr. Lucky train and taking a lot of turns and drawing a lot of cards like that. Mm -hmm. That's not uh, as, at, at all a part of the game anymore. So if you played it yesterday, I'm, you're gonna, what you're going to need is a big patch of red rules that say these are no longer in the book. Even though you think you might have just missed them, they're not there anymore. But if you played it 10 years ago, you won't even notice a difference. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, there's been multiple kind of plays off of that, different uh, mansions or castles. Yeah. Um, then the reverse of it, save Dr. Lucky. Uh, is any of that material going to end up in this release, or will it be kind of Well, you know, goals? Kickstarter is this yeah. octopus of projects, right? Yes, so right. Uh, I think the, the, the symbols for, for in Chinese for Kickstarter and overcommitment are, are the same. Um, there is a lot of Dr. Lucky stuff that I want to do. And yeah. so we've done a few expansions and variations in the past. Um, the core game is, is, I'm hoping to, I, I plan to have in the core game, not just the original Dr. Lucky Mansion, which everyone's familiar with, mm -hmm. a couple of tweaks to the board layout, mm -hmm. but on the reverse, a, uh, a new mansion that's an upstairs-downstairs that's actually based on the old consulate in, in Port Townsend, Washington, where we shoot the Dr. Lucky videos now. Ah, okay. um, uh, it, based on it, but, you know, engineered to work in the game. With the upstairs-downstairs map, it's going to be easier to shut off parts of the house for fewer players, which we are also doing on the main map by just sort of color-coding sections of rooms. Mm -hmm. But if you only have two or three players, you're just going to play upstairs. If you have four or five players, you're just going to play downstairs. If you have a full complement, you can use the whole map. And that helps us sort of fine-tune the, the, the balance of the game by sizing the map. Right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And, and for those who don't know, it's kind of clue in reverse. Yeah. It's, uh, the story of Kill Dr. Lucky is, is summed up in the title. In fact, how you win is summed up in the title. Uh, everyone is trying to kill Dr. Lucky. Everyone thinks they're the only person in the mansion who wants to kill him. So they're all working alone. If they could work together, it would be a lot easier. But you're all working alone, trying to kill him. No witnesses. Uh, right. And, and no one can see you do it. And he's very lucky. So attempts happen left and right. And he just gets out of them because he's just, you know, like Mr. Magoo. He doesn't see what's happening to him. And he, and he survives all these attacks and just keeps walking around his house. So, it, it, you know, like Clue, it has a top-down version of a mansion, but it's not a puzzle or a mystery-solving game or anything like that. It's just a, I've got to kill this old man. And even if you start the game with sort of an ambivalent attitude towards murder by the end, you're like, I hate this guy, I cannot wait for him to kill it. I've tried to kill him three times now. <laughs> That's right. So we have Kill Dr. Lucky coming up, and uh, what else do you have on the horizon, or is it kind of still pending? Um, so, I... I wanted to do a new game this year, um, but it's not ready. Okay. Um, what else I have on the horizon right now, what's, at, what's printing for September along with the Lord of the Fries decks, um, these are sort of extra pieces from the Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. We're doing a Lord of the Fries pairs deck, basically just taking menu from all the art from all those menus and turning it into a pairs deck. And if, if you know pairs from last year, that's the pub game with all kinds of different art. Right, in which variants. went huge, yeah. We're also doing a new Echo Chernik Pairs deck at the same time. Echo did our Barmaid's deck uh, for the first set of Pairs decks. She has a series of Goddesses of Food art that she's published mm -hmm. and gave me the rights to for a Pairs deck. Um, we're sort of, you know, resizing them a little bit to fit them on the cards. Sure. But yeah. other than that, they're just, they're just gorgeous pinups of, of food um, you know, personified. So there's chocolate, and I think there's chocolate, and there's bread and cheese and wine and, and rice and just all these different... And just these uh, goddess-like personas. Yep, yep. And I just, I invented the variant yesterday at breakfast and play-tested it this morning uh, for that game, and it's actually kind of cool. It's, it's an Iron Chef-style theme where you're making oh, nice. recipes out of these cards yeah. and then seeing which one actually sort of wins the contest. Um, cool. Okay. Those are all printing now, mm -hmm. or I'm, I'm sorry, they're printing for September. Mm -hmm. So I've got them in pre-production now. Um, I'm also doing preliminary design work on a game for Calliope. Uh, they're running the Titan series Kickstarter right now. It closes in just a few days, mm -hmm. and that is a very ambitious project from Calliope to put um, nine, uh, actually more than that now, a dozen or more game designers uh, on a roster and, and have each one of them do. Uh, an original gateway game mm -hmm. uh, for Calliope over the course of the next three or four years. So I'm on that, actually it's the first stretch goal, but they'll probably hit it. And so I'm working on a game for them. I'm, uh, the working title is The Train, and it's, it's basically just a game about building uh, cities in, in Colorado. Uh, it's not, it doesn't need mm -hmm. to be that specific, but it's, okay. you're building old, old style cities. And you are trying to be the best city because one of them is going to be the capital city. And so you want to have the most points. Super, super simple. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to play it yesterday with a nine-year-old. Uh, and she got it. And for the state that it's in, 
that was great. That 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 satisfies me for the time being that I'm that I'm not making a game that's too complicated. Like mm-hmm. she knew what she was doing. Uh, she was very close to winning. You know, she she and she didn't feel frustrated by it or anything like that. And that's yeah. great. Because with a gateway game, you want families to be able to play it. Of course, I, I have my, my playtest group is all adults, and they, they understand it as well, and they, they enjoy it. But I don't want it to be over the heads of, of the youngest players in the room. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, great. Um, so it sounds like you're pretty busy. <laughs> I have, I have, like, this This isn't actually my bag of games. This is some of my games. There's, a, uh, there's another bag bigger than this up in my room full of stuff that I brought to this show to test. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'm getting through it, but I still have quite a lot to do. I've got a lot of, a lot of stuff I'm working on. Like, More. even a new Pairs variant takes a few runs to make it work. Sure. Um, and all of the new Lord of the Fries decks, I got lots of good feedback this morning. I had a play test of about 30 people. Um, we had set up multiple tables and I had them all run through their menus and they mm-hmm. came back and hit me with all the feedback, you know, and mm-hmm. it's like, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. And I'm like, okay, good, good. Okay, I can fix that. I don't know if I can fix that because that's been the rules for 20 years, but sure. <laughs> you can't change that part. Well, I, it's I, in the name. I, 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 I can change it, but, but I haven't heard that from everyone. And so mm-hmm. if, it's a, if it's a grandfather rule and like it's not a point of contention, then I'm like, okay, well... You don't like that, but I think I'm going to keep it. I'm sorry you don't like that. Right. There's the door. Right. (laughs) I hope you enjoy leaving. No, no, I I can't be like that. But, but, you know, I I have to, uh, with all the things that I've changed, I have to be a lot more careful with not changing it in the wrong direction. Sure, yeah. Yeah, There's a reason that it's been an evergreen hit. Yeah. You don't want to chop down the tree. Yeah. (laughs) And and I think people will say that about Kill Dr. Lucky as well, that, well, why are you changing it? Because it's been popular Mm -hmm. for all these years. And it's like, well... What's popular about Kill Dr. Lucky is the story and the general format, and I'm certainly not disturbing those. Right. Um, it's more like the specifics of how you get around and what you do in this game that I think uh, a small tweak to the mechanics does a, a big favor to, to delivering on the promise of the story. I think we've about covered it, have we? I think so, yeah, okay. thank you. Well, thank you very much, James. Good to see you. I'll see you next time.